Well, I think my interest in science is just an outgrowth of my natural curiosity as a kid. I can't really say I really thought of it as science when I was out exploring around in the woods behind my house and finding frogs and snakes and looking at tadpoles and watching them metamorphosize. And I didn't think of it as science. I just thought of it as really interesting stuff when I was a kid. I mean, later, of course, we, we give it a label, science. But science is really just curiosity. There was a definite divide in college where I was studying physics and astronomy and I decided to go into the arts instead. That was a big decision. I felt that my skills were greater in the, in the narrative forms, whether it was representational artwork as an illustrator or as a storyteller, as a writer, I didn't know yet. So as a filmmaker, I was always cognizant of science in the back. And I, of course, I love science fiction. So when you're a science fiction filmmaker, it's all, it's all grist for the same mill. The making of Titanic really took me to a new level where I really felt that it was within my reach to be able to build deep ocean equipment, whether it was for photography or, or robotics for lighting, that sort of thing. Um, and that's when the two really crashed back into each other. From my perspective, I related to it as a beautiful alien world right here on Earth. And it wasn't long before I made the cognitive leap that I could go there. I might not be able to go to another planet, but I could go to the alien world on this planet. And so when I was 16, I pestered my parents until they, they took me, you know, actually out of Canada into the United States, across the border, because we lived in a border city in Niagara Falls, to learn to scuba dive. And there was no place to scuba dive where I lived. I had to, I had to do my first open water dive in a river. Um, I didn't meet the ocean for another year and a half after that. And of course, that was, that was a love affair that's, that's never ended. I think the challenges that face us as a species now will be solved by science. And we need to understand it. Every citizen, if we're to have a democratic society that works, we need to understand science in order to be responsible voters. It's pretty much that simple. So when you look at things like climate change, uh, species loss, habitat loss, uh, the emergence of artificial intelligence, and all the other medical ethics issues, that they're all, you, you need a basis in science to understand them. And as a culture, we need to trust what science tells us, not just cherry pick the things we want to hear and ignore the things we don't want to hear. I think National Science Week is a spectacularly good idea, and I think that other countries should do exactly what you're doing here in Australia. Every kid is born a scientist. Every kid has curiosity. It's our culture that, that separates people from that innate childlike curiosity. National Science Week bring us back to it. To me, I can't say it any simpler than to me, science is the only true path to truth. There are a thousand paths to opinion. There's only one path to truth, and that's science.